so proud of what I'm hearing right now. A little bit of me so for glad. a few seconds. It's better. Oh, so good. <laughs> Uh, so this is our typical starting spot and this should be a familiar spot for anyone who's actually looked either for an interception or a uh, appendix. And I think it's kind of a nice place just to start any abdominal examination. Um, your right lower quadrant is kind of where the, the most bang for your buck is in almost any of the things we look for. Um, so, uh, this is going to be your psoas muscle here with, um, the two vessels kind of, uh, of the, um, the iliac vessels uh, adjacent to it on the medial side. And so it kind of looks like this. Um, do you guys know what that bright structure that you're seeing in the middle of the psoas muscle is? So this thing right here. Because it'll jump out at you sometimes if you're not really sure. And some people think it's like a hyperechoic fat thing and it's that inflammation or something. It's actually a nerve. So it's actually just your psoas uh, I don't know if it's a psoas nerve, it's a nerve that passes through the psoas muscle. Um, so that's that's something that you'll see with quite quite a bit of regularity. Um, these are the two vessels. I'm not quite sure what this structure is in this image. It might be the appendix or something, but it, I don't know. I don't think it's that important. The point is, is that you're looking for these two, um, and then this is your muscle. Now, what you can see that's interesting here is just how kind of close this is to the, the surface, right? So this is your abdominal musculature. This is your like your abs. And then this is the actual psoas muscle. So when you push down, you can basically bring all these structures right up right beside each other. So the mere fact that when you're pushing hard enough and you can't bring those to the surface, that should actually be a clue to you that there's potentially things like inflammation going on or something kind of, you know, in between you and that muscle that's, you know, sort of obstructing the way because air shouldn't usually be that obstructing for you to get to this kind of view. Um, I, I think that uh, just for anyone, uh, that was a stool filled appendix, oh. uh, which is one of these rare, well, not rare, but like a, a mimic you'll encounter sometimes of, uh, it looks big, but the patient doesn't act like they have appendicitis. It's always the next level of Dr. Desaro. So uh, when I said find the marbled steak, this is what I'm kind of getting at, that that psoas muscle kind of looks like your classic marbled steak with that uh, little bright area in the middle there. Um, so look for that as your sort of starting point and then move upwards towards the patient's head from there to try and find those air columns of the ascending column. That's kind of a good starting approach to the, to the scan. Um, when you're pushing down, you might see some things that kind of surprise you and you go, oh, I'm not sure what the heck I'm looking at. Something like this. What is going on behind those two vessels? Like what's all this stuff right back here? Is it bladder? Is it? Is what's that? The hip? No, uh, not quite. Some, you're closer, close ish. What's going on there? What's that, Magalie? But it looks like there is a white, like hyper echoic line. Uh huh. It's already shallow underneath, so it's more hair. So, hmm. like the ascending pattern, or? It's no. probably the spine. Spine? So it's the spine. spine. Yeah. So so this is why, you know, if you push down, you can feel their spine. Like it, everything moves out of the way. All those structures kind of just split the, you know. It touches the skin. Yep. It, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say it touches the skin. <laughs> I don't think we eviscerated the person to no, get this I mean, image. But it touches the muscle. Yes. Yeah. It, so it comes right up. So you can like get right there. So so this, like you can see it's the. You can see all the vessels here, right? So this is probably your aorta right here. And and it splits off. You can actually see the point where it splits. So see a two, one. And then it comes back and two vessels. So it's uh, it's very easy, especially in younger kids, to get to this close to the spine. So you don't don't shock yourself if you're like, what the hell is this giant, you know, tumor doing in their abdomen? It's just their spine. And you notice how it like the appearance of it changes as the probe's rolling up and down. Yeah. So body disc, body disc. Yeah. Okay, so in terms of looking for the intus, um, basically it's one of the simpler scans for us to do. There's there's no sort of magic here. It's lawn mowing. It's making sure you've covered the area. Um, I used to mow the lawn when I was like, you know, high school student. And uh, if I was having a lazy day, I'd miss a bunch of strips. And then, you know, I wouldn't get 20 bucks or whatever. I'd get 15 and that'd be okay too. Cause it took me only like 20 minutes instead of an hour to do it properly. So uh, anyways, I digress. Um, 
when you're doing a proper scan here, you should try and uh, make sure you're seeing everything. Um, so here are guts. Um, and it's important to keep in mind that an interception, um, why do I keep saying it the long way when I don't want to, intus, can go um, all the way around this bowel. So you can start with something that goes this long, this long, or all the way to the rectum, and you will see something that looks all the way down there eventually here. So um, it's important to keep in mind that you may see that structure, that target structure and the other things we're going to talk about anywhere in the abdomen, though, of course, the right side is much more of a high yield zone. Um, and so your scan should sort of reflect that. And so typically what you're going to start out is you're going to start with your linear probe. So as we mentioned before, especially as we just said, you can see the spine so close to the surface. You don't need to be using deep probes here. This is just something where you're using linear probes, similar to when you're doing an appendix scan. And you're going to kind of scan up and down all the way along there. And then as you get back to the other side and you've scanned all the way up to the top, you can kind of take a turn and scan the other direction. Um, the other way that uh, people will sort of talk about is going along the colon, right? So going transverse, longitudinal transverse to kind of follow its natural kind of origin. I mean, at the end of the day, what you're trying to do is just cover all that surface area. And frankly, when you've got a toddler, the, the sort of face of your linear probe is almost like, I would say like a sixth or so of the you know, entire body surface area just from one scan or entire um, abdominal area. So it doesn't take you that long to kind of feel like you've covered all your different spots. Areas to sort of make sure you don't miss. Uh, the pericolic gutter can be an area where sometimes things will hide underneath the liver capsule is often where sort of Sharice Kwan, one of our uh, staff who's on mat leave right now, will often talk about sort of finding all the intus that she's ever seen. Um, and certainly while the left side of the abdomen is less yield, you know, you kind of want to be the person that picks up on that, uh, you know, you know, abnormal anatomy or the person with the malrotation who has the intussection or something like that. That would be pretty slick, but um, not as high a yield an area. And sometimes you can see things like small bowel, small bowel intestines over there more often, but um, still not really that hard to look for. Um, so definitely try and take a look. So now that we've talked about all the normals and all that kind of stuff, let's look at the belly of the beast here. So this is probably the best picture I've seen that we have of an interception in terms of giving us all those classic signs. It is not normally, or it's not always this perfect, but it's important to show a perfect one, like a textbook one, so that we can kind of talk about the signs and stuff. So um, what we're seeing here is your classic findings. So you've got a structure that's somewhere around two and a half to probably three centimeters big, um, depending on which angle you're measuring from, has these sort of concentric rings of different kind of echogenicities um, and probably has some kind of central lead point here, which uh, I'm, I'm wondering about. Um, and we'll sort of get to what different kind of lead points you could potentially have. So what do we call this sign that I'm seeing right here? This one's pretty easy. Target sign. So I don't think I need to kind of make it, you know, that obvious, but there you go, target sign. It almost fits perfectly with the built-in graphic. Um, and then we've got this kind of sign. What would we call this kind of sign? Is this the target sign still? What's that you were saying? A sandwich sign, okay. So there's our sandwich. Nice, beautiful burger. Some people call it the hamburger sign as well. Um, I will contend though that this is probably not the best sign. I actually prefer a nice late night treat called a shawarma. And I feel like a shawarma is the better option. And, and the reason I say shawarma sign is because it's usually open on one side as opposed to any sandwich you've ever had. So I don't know, like maybe you're the kind of person that doesn't cut your bun all the way through. I don't know. But uh, personally, I see more of a shawarma than a sandwich. So whatever floats your boat. Uh, the other thing you'll see people mention is uh, the pseudo kidney yeah. sign. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not as big a fan of this one because, frankly, I don't think I've ever mistaken an interception for a kidney. Um, but I guess some people do describe it. I think it's actually more useful when you've got kind of a worse probe, to be honest with you. Like if you, you have poor definition, it kind of looks similar. Um, it's got a similar kind of organish, you know, round structure to it with a well delineated kind of um, where it starts and where it ends kind of appearance. But I, I don't feel like I'm ever going to mistake calyces or pyramids of a kidney in an interception, unless it's a very unusual kind of appearance. Um, but nonetheless, some people will describe this, this as a pseudo kidney. Um, in terms of what we're actually seeing here, so 
we'll go through these different layers of this. What is this layer right here? 